Welcome back to my channel, my name is Olive. I thought we could take a little break from the yoga and movement videos this week and do a Q&A with me because it has been a little bit of time and I have changed and grown as an individual in regards to my business and my personal life, so yes. Um, I asked you guys on Instagram what questions you had from me and I got a wonderful mixture of stuff. So I'm going to leave like a timeline in the description of the question so you can kind of skip through to see whichever one you want to listen to. But yeah, thank you and I hope you enjoy and I'll see you there. Kicking it off with a fairly deep question. We have, what are your deepest fears? So <laughs> I think perhaps my deepest fear is the fear of loneliness, as in I am pretty happy and comfortable being on my own, I like my own space, but the loneliness comes from not being able to share perhaps deep thoughts or things that I'm working through that perhaps are like troubling or related to like mental health issues or like not being able to have friends, family, or just like a partner that I can communicate that with. So fear of loneliness is perhaps like my biggest fear. And I've definitely had that despite being surrounded by friends and family and my partner. So yeah, that's my biggest fear. <laughs> okay, so to lighten up a little bit, what do you think you would have done if yoga wasn't your career? Mm, interesting. I have always been interested by the human mind. When I was finishing university, I wanted to go down the route of being a clinical psychologist, kind of working within the realm of mental health. But after my degree, I was honestly done with academia. I didn't want to have to do my master's and like a PhD afterwards. And to kind of go into the route with mental health and clinical psych, was just honestly too challenging there were too many barriers up um, and in the meantime I did my yoga training and I'm kind of glad that that was a career path I took instead but yeah it would have been something to do with clinical psychology right how do you keep safe and your body in good condition when you're so active interesting so I'm 25 now I will be 26 soon and I have definitely started to notice my body's ability to recover is a lot slower than what it was when I was like obviously 21, 22. Um, so what I do to just kind of make sure that I recover well from all my sort of like trainings is adequate hydration, adequate sleep, I make sure I eat well, like a well balanced kind of diet, but I also see a manual therapist pretty regularly just to make sure that I'm in working condition <laughs> and everything is fine. Every now and then I will go for a massage or a sauna as well, just things to like aid and facilitate my recovery. Um, I also am pretty body aware in terms of like, I can tell if something's not right or not optimal with my body, if I need to rest or have a lighter day at the gym. Um, so it kind of has come with experience, um, this ability to look after myself more. Especially as someone who has a menstrual cycle, I now know where I can push within my cycle and when I also need to slow down and rest. And that has been an absolute game changer for me. Um, because yeah, it just means that there's more sort of like um, balance with the fluctuations with my hormones and everything and how my body responds to movement. So yeah. Okay, I really appreciate this question because <laughs> I don't see myself in this way. Someone asked, how are you so confident? And it's always interesting when someone else has that perception of you and it's not necessarily your own perception of self. Um, and I guess my like confidence has come with having a job where I do interact with people on a daily basis on like multiple occasions. Um, I love chatting and getting to know individuals, but I also think it comes from like really trying to do the work and understand myself quite deeply over the past like two or three years. And from that, there's a level of confidence that kind of comes about because my self-awareness is larger than it has ever been before. And I'm trying to still be like unapologetically myself, obviously still a work in progress, but um, yeah, that's one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you call yourself queer? Interesting. So it very much depends on who I am speaking to. So I've used um, 
queer to describe myself, I've used bisexual, I've also used pansexual, it very much depends on the individual I'm talking to and perhaps like their level of understanding when it comes to the spectrum of sexuality. Like for example, with like my grandparents, I'm probably more likely to use bisexual because it's a little bit more obvious than like pansexual because pan is a little bit more like new age, you could argue. Um, but yeah, I would use any of those three to kind of like describe myself. It just very much depends on who I'm talking to at the time. To kind of lead on from that question, someone asked, are you currently dating any guy dot 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 slash, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not, no. I am single and I'm just having a groovy old time being with myself and just meeting new people too. So there are two parts to this question that I'm going to take a while to like answer. So the first part is, do you do coaching work with clients who aren't based in Brighton? Yes, I absolutely do because I also work on Zoom. So I have a couple of clients like around the world, which is super cool. I have um, a client in San Francisco and I have one in Thailand as well. So yes, I do. Obviously, we just work with time zones. Um, and the second part to this question is, what kind of coaching do you offer and what does a session with you look like? So that's very, very much dependent on what we are going to work with. So for example, I coach yoga. So we've got Ashtanga yoga and we've got Vinyasa yoga, which is like the asana, the movement practice. I also do Pranayama, which is breath work. And I also do Yoga Nidra, which is like yogic sleep. It's a sort of form of meditation. Um, I also do various like groundwork practices, so whether that is literally just like rolling around on the floor, <laughs> whether it's like more mobility based drills, or whether it's more like primal flow and kind of like locomotion. I also do a bunch of like hand balance stuff, so whether it's handstands, headstands, forearm stands, as well as like things like crow pose. And more recently I have started doing like strength training. So strength training involves anything with added resistance. So think using like a kettlebell, a dumbbell, resistance bands or like barbell training as well. So like I kind of said, you can work with me through an online capacity through Zoom or you can work with me in real life. <laughs> um, I also offer like coaching online in terms of strength training. So we would do like two or three sessions a week um, you would go and do that yourself and then sort of put it all onto an app and then would have like a coaching call, you know, for half an hour every week. So there are various ways that you can work with me. If you are interested, get in touch and we will have like a free 30 minute consultation on Zoom so we can just talk about it a little bit more. Which is more fun, parkour or acro yoga? I have more exposure to acro yoga because I've sort of had like dipped in and out of it for about like four years with various friends and I really really enjoy it because you're working with another body and I've not only done it as like a base but I've also been the flyer and yeah it's just very very fascinating working with another human body whether you're holding them or they're holding you. Um, in terms of parkour I haven't done it tons but the little that I have done I've really enjoyed because even though I know that I'm physically capable of some of the things, it's the mental block that really gets to me, which I quite enjoy the process of working through, even though it is incredibly frustrating at times. It's um, yeah, interesting to learn about yourself. So I don't know, they're both as enjoyable as one another as movement practices. They are wildly different um, physically and mentally. So yeah, it's hard to kind of choose between the two. <laughs> A very sweet question here saying, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm doing really well. Um, there was a dark couple of periods, dark couple of months <laughs> that I have kind of come out the other end of and I'm feeling more like myself and more happy again. So yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> okay, what would your MMA fighter name be? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna let you guys put it in the comments below. What do you think my MMA fighter name would be? How did you find the confidence to start lifting in a gym? It's so intimidating to me. I totally, totally hear you with that. It can be a very, very intimidating environment. I think I've always walked in with like 
blissful ignorance. I kind of just like plug my headphones in, make my way in, kind of fake it until you make it almost. That's how I have done in the past. And that's arguably helped me gain the level of confidence, but it shouldn't have to be that way because it should be an accessible environment but unfortunately for a lot of us it really really isn't so what's really helped my confidence is actually working with a coach and having regular check-in sessions whether you work with a coach in person at the gym and they can show you everything in person that's a beautiful way to just boost your confidence to know what to do um, but for me I worked online with my coach because I've already done a couple of years in the gym but working with her has been invaluable because I've just been able to be like, yeah, damn, I can do these things in the gym. Um, if you don't have access to a coach, go with a friend. And that is always so, so helpful to do. So yeah, that's my advice to you. Hi, Olive. I'm starting my journey to handstands. Any tips and tricks for beginners? Yeah, so perhaps the biggest and most simple piece of advice I can give is just get upside down like 10 minutes every single day, see if you can just get upside down and train that exposure because you've got to remember you're inverting your entire body. So all of your systems have to invert with you and that includes your breathing. Um, so my advice is just try get upside down 10 minutes every day, just find the balance on your hands, little micro movements, check in with your breathing. Even if it means like having your foot or your feet on a stool and then stacking your hips above your shoulders, you're still technically inverting or doing it against a wall, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, like I said, handstands are one of those skills that you're gonna keep learning continuously, loads of little bits of information. So the more you can expose yourself to it, the easier it will become in time. Where can we buy your feet pics? DM me. I got asked this question quite a lot, so we're now going to do it. We're going to do a little tattoo tour. <laughs> so, I have a couple, majority are on my like arms and my back and some on my legs. I actually don't have any from my knees upwards. I have one on my ribs, but let's do a little tattoo tour. Dude, you got a tattoo! Hands first. So along here I got a couple of dots on my fingers and a little leaf. This was by my friend Grace Reed. I will tag all the artists below if you guys are interested. Um, and on my fingers here, I got some more leaves and I got the evil eye by a guy called Kirk Budden. On my forearms, I got some matching sort of like tribal inspired design by Ellie. She's called Shanty Tattoo. Over here, I have a little English rune for the yew tree. <laughs> Story behind that was because I always say, yo! <laughs> so I was like, yeah, cool, let's get a little yew tree symbol. Um, so that is by Morbid Pen, Ben. Over here I have sort of a Mendy style design with a lotus flower. This was actually my third tattoo. And it's by a lady called Lisa um, at Black Sails Tattoo in Brighton. Over here I have a little handstand person and it's actually me. <laughs> so lame, I know. Um, yeah, it was an outline of a photo on Instagram and my friend Grace did that. Grace Reed, who also did my fingers. And over here we've got um, an Arabian dagger um, because I grew up in Dubai and we had quite a few of these like around the house. <laughs> um, so a guy called Sam King did this for me and it's one of my favourites. I just absolutely love the design because it's a little bit like traditional as well. And then over there we've got the Buddha eyes story behind that is that I had a wallet for years and years and years and it had that design. Um, and it just kind of like happily fell into my story of how I now teach yoga. So Shannon uh, Parrot did this tattoo for me. Um, just checking that I've not missed out any. <laughs> Over here, Ellie Shanti Tattoo has done a tiger for me. Um, if you know me, you will know that I have a little ginger kitten called Jax and the markings that she's designed are actually his markings on his body. So he sits on my arm. On the inside here, we have Kali Ma. She is the Indian goddess of destruction, but destruction of like the ego and bad karma. And she's just a fucking powerful lady. <laughs> so my friend Franzi or Naga Tattoo did her. Me and Franzi actually did our yoga teacher training together. So nice little like memento. Um, up here, Kirk Budden has also done a Himsa and it's a yogic 
term, meaning non-violence, interpret that as you will. And over here I got a Greek statue body. I went home in October and we went to the Abu Dhabi Louvre Museum and I took a photo of this because it just like really encapsulated me. So Loz, she did this for me. Loz is up in London at Parliament Tattoo. And then I got some eucalyptus leaves kind of trailing down my arm. A lovely lady called Abby did this for me. She's down in Brighton. And Kirk also did my tree frog tattoo. And um, the story behind the tree frog is that it is my spirit animal. A couple years ago, um, a friend of a friend was a shaman and he took me on a spirit guide and I found out that it was a tree frog. In the kind of meditation I was wading through some like long grass and there was like a beautiful like lake and massive like tabletop mountains kind of either side. And I found myself like climbing up the side of this mountain and as I looked up there was this tiny little tree frog that like offered its hand to me so it pulled me up and we sat on the mountain and kind of watched sunset and it looked like that meme of Mufasa and Simba. Wow. And that was basically me and this little tree frog so he's my buddy and he just sits on my shoulder having a great old time. <laughs> Alex is looking at me like what the f Okay cool so moving up towards like my head. I got some leaves on my ear. Again, Grace Reed did that one for me, and she also did like the three little dots around my tragus. And then on this side, I have the Om symbol. A friend of mine did that a while ago, just at her house. It was stick and folk. And then if we move on to like the back of my neck and my back, I'm gonna turn around now. So we got like this design here which is uh, by a guy called um, Fake Skin Tattoo, or Yasir, and it was honestly to God the worst pain I have ever been in my life. Ah! Two and a half hours of absolute brutal pain. It was so bad, but it was so worth it because it looks so cool and I never have to do it ever again. But yeah, I was just like stoked to have something by Yasir and was like, I'm really happy for you to just design whatever. And it was really cool because he just sat there with me whilst we were talking and designed it like then and there. So it feels really, really special. Um, if you can kind of see, I have the leaf. And that was my first tattoo. So it's a Japanese maple leaf. And on the inside, there are like three symbols. And they are, again, like English runes. So the story behind that was when I was at university and around the halls that I lived in, there was this Japanese maple tree that my mom actually took a photo of me next to. And then the year later, I kind of walked back past it and I was like, oh damn, we've been through a lot this past year. <laughs> Basically, I had a really bad eating disorder in the first year and I had kind of like recovered the following year as I walked past this tree. So I took a leaf from the tree as a kind of like token or memento of the growth that I have kind of been through. And the three symbols in the middle stand for, in autumn, I decided to heal my physical and mental health. So, got quite a lot of meaning. Um, and it was done by a lady in Exeter. So, there we go. <laughs> so, that's kind of upper body. Nope, I have one more. On my ribs, is it this side? I always forget. I have Om Mani Padme Home tattooed on me, which is a mantra that I used to use quite a lot about five years ago. Um, whilst I was meditating. I always get to this point, I'm like, I definitely feel like I'm missing something, but I'm not. <laughs> Onto my legs. Over here, Yasir Fake Skin tattooed this frog on me, and it's perhaps my favourite tattoo, because he's sitting on a sunflower, having a great old time smoking. <laughs> and it was actually on Yasir's flush. I asked, like, can I please have that? He was like, Olive, loads of people have asked me, and I said no to all of them, but you. I was like, oh, dude means a lot. <laughs> and then I also have an Arabian coffee pot down here, which Morbid Pen Ben also did. Um, and then I have Ganache down on <laughs> the inside of my leg, which Ellie Shanti Tattoo did for me. This is my first piece by her actually. And I used to use, or I still do actually, use Ganache's mantra quite a lot um, when I am meditating. And then finally, the last one we have well, actually, there are two technically here. I used to have a bumblebee underneath this peony, but I got it covered up because I got it with the next boyfriend of mine. Never get tattoos with your partners. 
<laughs> with your friends, yeah, not an ex. And then I got Ellie to cover it up with a beautiful peony. You can still kind of see the bumblebee, but I'm not too mad about it because it's like, it's a token, it's a memento and non-attachment in that. But um, yeah, that's my tattoo tour. Of course I have more booked in, but you guys will just have to wait and see. Okay, where do you feel you get your motivation to keep going? Hmm, this is going to be a bit dark because, <laughs> because my motivation, and I am, I'm assuming this means with like movement and training. Um, initially, it was fueled by my eating disorder because I was like, I got to work off like the food that I've eaten. I'm only going to feel worthy if I train, blah, blah, blah. Um, and now my motivation comes through, and this is after quite a long time. My motivation purely comes from curiosity. I'm genuinely curious as to what my body can do with various kinds of like movement modalities, um, especially when it comes to my like Olympic lifting um, and strength training. I'm so curious to see how much I can push myself with the weight. And because it's a little bit more like structured and like goal orientated, it's easier to find and observe the like linear progression, especially as I'm working with a coach. But when it comes to like my own stuff, like floor work, yoga, handstands, again, it's just like, where can I take this? I have this incredible tool and I just want to see what I can do. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, where it comes from. It's mainly my own curiosity and desire right now to just experiment with everything, because why not? Okay, someone asked what my training split is. So um, I currently train three days a week at the gym and we've just started like a new training block where we're focusing more on the Olympic lifts and the technique towards them. So kind of one day is focusing on the clean and jerk, the second day is focusing more on the snatch and the third day is kind of like supplementary accessory work, sort of like helping with those two lifts um, with a bit of like cardio kind of chucked into it. Um, so they're not necessarily like traditional splits like a bodybuilder would might do like chest and like triceps or like back and then like legs it's kind of just whole body compound movements um, but within that week as well there'd be a couple of days where I do like handstands or again some floor work or if the weather's good I might do some parkour or train outside doing some acro but also I like to climb so at least once a week I try to climb but yeah, that's kind of my training split at the moment. <laughs> so kind of going on that, someone asked, what's a climb you're most proud of? That's probably one that I did fairly recently. Um, it was just a dyno. Well, the whole climb in itself wasn't technically like a dyno. Dyno is like a dynamic move. Um, I made it into a dyno and it was super fun because dynos have always terrified me, but I've been feeling really strong and capable in my body, so yeah. Okay, how did you get the confidence to teach yoga? Was it always in you or did you build it up? So, interesting story, one of my teachers, I think my English teacher in year eight, said to me once, like, oh, Olive, you would make a really good teacher. And I just fully assumed that I was like, eh, if psychology kind of failed, <laughs> I would go back to school and just teach PE because my PE teachers, I had a really good relationship with them, I got on really well, and they always just seemed to be having like the best time. So I was like, yeah, I could totally do that. And when I was doing my teacher training, um, that kind of came back into my head. I was like, oh damn, I could, you know, I could teach yoga. And one of my friends on my course, um, Emma, actually said to me, she's like, Olive, you know, if you do this, you can run with it and take it really far. And that really, really stuck with me right from the very beginning that someone else saw that ability in myself when I lacked the confidence in myself and my skills and my ability. So those two kinds of, um, People have always been in the back of my mind, sort of fueling how I've gone forwards. And yeah, don't get me wrong, like I was super nervous when I first started teaching. I was 21, I was so, so young. And I was guiding people who were, you know, perhaps like 20 years older than me. They're not gonna trust a 21 year old. And that's totally, totally fine. But my confidence has come through teaching over the years and being so assured in what I'm teaching and my skills and my ability. And also just constantly kind of like doing work around it to just supplement that whether it's through more research or just honing my skills with more training so yeah it's something that's just like developed over the years okay how do you balance your multifaceted business as well as having your own time to practice so my kind of logic is that 
my time to practice is headspace just for me. Um, going to the gym is time literally just for me where I'm not giving to anyone else and the reason why I invested in my coach Chloe is because I don't want to have to think about what I'm doing at the gym. So again, I'm trying to keep my business and my personal kind of life and goals separate from that. I find it very hard to actually practice yoga these days. I don't necessarily have time to go to a lot of other yoga classes and I don't necessarily practice much yoga asana at home because I don't feel like it's for me anymore. It's for my students because I'm always thinking of like flows that I can create for them. So in terms of like my own personal yoga practice, it's more to do with like meditation, breath work, yoga nidra or handstands. <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely like a split between my business and my own kind of personal training. Where did you complete your yoga teacher training and PT qualifications? So my yoga training I did at a school in India, in Goa, called Kranti Yoga. And my PT qualification was online with a company called Origin. What advice do you have for people trying to create a more consistent exercise routine? So there are like various things out there, right? Where they say like, stick to a habit for 30 days, stick to a habit for 21 days, stick to a habit for three months. Ultimately, it's obviously down to consistency and also you have to ask yourself how much do you really want it and you have to give it like enough time. You can't just expect results or your mindset to change within two weeks because that's not how our brains work. I mean, perhaps like that could be you for sure, but you've got to at least try give it a little bit of time and really like make a habit of carving that time out for yourself where you know that, okay, I'm going to start my day with like 10 minutes of movement or something, or like split it across the day or have like an hour at the end of the day or whatever it is. It's genuinely, from my experience, it's experimentation and you have to be willing to do that. Motivation is just not gonna come out of thin air. Motivation comes from action and seeing, you know, the results of that action, whether it's like mentally or physically or whether it's related to your goal. So yes, I would say just start and keep going. It's as simple as that. We don't need to sugarcoat it with bullshit. Cool, okay. Have you ever had any outer body experiences with meditation? So I haven't had that much of a consistent meditation practice. I will fully like admit that. Um, it's something that I still kind of struggle with, but there has been one occasion where I have been meditating and it's felt like I've come, sort of like come out of my body and I'm watching myself from up here, but I'm watching myself see the scene in my head, if that makes sense. So I'm watching whatever my visualization was, but from like up here. <laughs> um, I've had more out of body experiences with um, other substances. A final question, any advice you wish you had at 21? It's really hard because like, arguably looking back at where I was at 21, I don't know whether the advice I would say to myself then would then change the trajectory of like where I am now. I've obviously had to go through various like life lessons and hardships and blah, blah, blah to get to where I am. But I think I would probably say like, just believe in yourself just believe in your strengths and your abilities and just keep just keep doing you because you you got this <laughs> that's what I would say to myself um, as obscure and as nuanced as that can be that's probably the most kind of yeah truth I guess I would share with myself but yeah there we go so thanks so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed and you gained something out of listening to me <laughs> and my life um but yes i will see you guys next time if you have any follow-up questions or any suggestions for future videos do let me know if not i will see you next week don't forget to like comment subscribe see you then